The one thing that we can see clearly is the need for speed and the need for adaptability. My name is Mary Daly and I want to share a framework with you that will help you get started on building your organization to be future ready and future capable. Even though the future is far and times are uncertain, it's possible and necessary to build for the future. What can we do? We can accept that the future is unknowable and start anyway. Let's start the thinking process and bring what we can know into the present. As Colleen Patrick Goudreau says, don't do nothing because you can't do everything. We know we need sufficient clarity about the future in order to come back to today and start shaping our organization towards the future in practical and concrete ways. I'm going to share a four step process with you, a thinking approach for building your future capable organization. We'll identify drivers, explore future capabilities, close gaps today, and build a strategic staircase that enables you to systematically build for your future. This isn't a simplistic solution and it doesn't rely on false certainty about the future. It does enable you to get a foothold into the future that enables you to come back to your current state and have the confidence and the courage to make important organizational decisions today that line you up for your intended future. On the way to the future, we're going to encounter a myriad of external forces, forces that we can't control, forces over which we have no influence, natural disasters, supply chain disruptions, currency fluctuations, pandemics. The ability to adapt, to use energy and imagination to respond, those are going to be vital skills for all organizations. This thinking process is not a simplistic antidote. It's a recognition that we need a creative and experimental approach in order to manage productively in our complex world. When we realize there's no way that we can predict the future with precision, it's easier to embrace an experimental spirit. We start, learn, ask questions, learn more, sharpen your intent, build more, keep learning and keep adapting. Strategy, that's an iterative process. And building an organization, that's an iterative process too. This approach to building for the future, building a future capable organization, it's not a prescription, it's a thinking path. It's already clear, we already know that more employees need more capabilities in order to do their jobs well and for us as a business to succeed. For this strategic framework, for this process, we're zoomed out at an organizational level this is not about individual employee skills. What does your organization need to be, to do, to have, to be successful in the future, to achieve your winning aspiration, or to make the change that you wish to see in the world? Here's the four step process, not a prescribed methodology. It involves structured thinking techniques that enable you to bring your teams into this future building process. I'm going to array them quickly and then come back to each one. Let's start at the beginning with the end in mind. All substantial strategy processes require an understanding of the why behind change. Once we articulate the catalyst for change, the headwinds, the tailwinds affecting our business, we take a look at the strategic capabilities the organization needs to have to respond to those drivers. This tour through future thinking, that gives you sufficient clarity to be able to come back and take a look at the known organizational gaps and challenges that you have today in a new light. The fourth step, that involves the design of that strategic staircase, that roadmap for investing in strategic capabilities and assets that enable you to achieve your future. Now let me do a drill down into each one of these steps. Our first step answers the question, why change? What are the current and emerging forces that we're going to need to respond to in order to deliver on our vision and our strategy? 
Not every organization has a clear vision or the corresponding strategy from which to derive all those capabilities that we're going to need to build to achieve the future. This thinking path doesn't demand an intact and coherent strategy. It does require thinking through the nature of the forces that are already pressing on the organization, as well as those that are emerging. Having thought through and articulated those drivers for change, leaders are in a better position to share the change and the transformation story with employees. Without that clear and compelling storyline, it's easy and understandable that employees believe that they, their work, or their past is being disparaged. Without the change story, it can end up sounding like you're the problem or you are not the right fit. Instead, with a conversation on drivers, a robust story of the need for change, leaders can say, here's where we are, here are the forces that we are going to have to deal with. If we stay the same, we're going to fall behind and the gap to our future capability is going to be even greater. Staying the same is going to be a greater risk than forging ahead, however unknown. This second future thinking step is about understanding the implications of those drivers on our organization. What are the capabilities we're going to need as an organization to be able to respond and deliver on our strategy? What are the critical capabilities we need to achieve our purpose? It's true that the farther out your future is, the less clearly you can see the shape and the intensity of those drivers for change. At this stage, when thinking about the longer future, there is no need and it's not even possible to create something very precise and inclusive. Examining drivers, those catalysts for change, those provide the inspiration for all kinds of levels of business planning. In this case, we're thinking through the lens of our organization. We want to be able to come back to today and make concrete resource and structure decisions in a planful and deliberate way. What will we need to be, do, or have in order to deliver value in the future? This is not about a specific skill set or specific people. This is what we need as an organization. This is higher order thinking at the level of the business. It may eventually be translated into specific skills or jobs, but we can't see that from here. A focus on capability planning at the organizational level that facilitates a broader enterprise wide workforce view and doesn't focus on individual talents. And that makes sense because you can't see the future with precision and you can't interrogate the future for details it cannot offer up. The process of examining drivers of change and the implications for your organization might have been a little uncomfortable, but persisting through that discomfort will pay off many fold when you come back to the present, as you're going to see today's gaps in a whole new light. You will have new clarity on what you need to stop doing, what you need to improve, change, or create. Your concern about some of the current gaps might actually be confirmed through your future thinking process. For other gaps that you thought you needed to close, you might see that investing in those solutions aren't going to get you where you need to go in the future. As you think about resolving known gaps using your future orientation, You can think about gaps more from a work perspective than a specific job perspective. Thinking strategically about resourcing at this stage means you're assessing the features of the work, not specific jobs. Is it temporary or ongoing, known or new expertise? And with that kind of broader resourcing questioning, you can more easily consider the alternatives that exist besides simply buying or building permanent staff. The work that you've done by this stage on both drivers and future organizational capabilities are going to enable you to design a deliberate path from the future. When you design back from the future, you can then build a strategic staircase, a roadmap for your investments that allows you to stage 
when and how you build your strategic capabilities and your assets. This building process, this strategic staircase, it's dynamic. It's not once and done, and it doesn't mean that you're changing your structure and resources all the time. You'll be learning all the time, gaining from your experience in the world, testing your ideas, and sharpening your resource strategy. The thinking you've done on the future is necessarily broad and imprecise, and your work on drivers has confirmed for you that you always need to be responding to a composite of forces, drivers pressing on your organization, which can grow or change, and you won't have the luxury to respond to one driver at a time. Building a future capable organization, it's an inherently dynamic and adaptive process, and your investments in the organization and the organization design should be calibrated to the level of clarity that you have about what you need to line up with your future. The act of building your organization while it's running, that can feel like changing a tire while driving. Let's look at building for your future and operating at the very same time. Building and adapting, adding resources, changing resources, that won't happen all at once. Many times you'll be layering in new resources and functions over time. When we talk about organization design and building organizations, it often can sound like sticks and boxes, just the org chart part. And the org chart part can seem like it's only scaffolding, detached from real work and how the business gets done. So your future capable organization, it's more than an org chart. It requires a deliberate approach to creating the processes, systems, and behaviors that bring the full power of your resourcing strategy to life. The structure provide clarity on the architecture of your business, but leaders only need sufficient clarity to be able to create the conditions within which the best work can most easily be achieved. Building an adaptive organization requires you to pay attention to this second essential layer your organizational culture or your operating system. This list is a subset from Aaron Dignan's Brave New Work book. This list of parameters gives you a way of deliberately and intentionally weaving flexibility and adaptability into your organization. And agility is the outcome of working through parameters like this in an intentional way. These how questions thinking carefully about the way work gets done. It provides you a way of making the boundaries that might be created through structures disappear. And it gives you a way of creating intersections across your organization. Which is more important, the bricks or the mortar? We need them both. A discussion on the organization's operating model, that might sound like an obsession with the internal workings of the business future strategic capabilities that we talked about, those go to the heart of your business or your organizational purpose. They're not oriented to the inside. These future strategic capabilities, they are squarely focused on the capabilities your organization needs to enhance its value proposition to customers, patients, clients. You're going through a process of sharpening your strategy and articulating the change you wish to see in the world or your winning aspiration. These are the capabilities that are visible when you out of the building, as Steve Blank says, the capabilities that your customers or your clients are looking for in you. The approach that I've described here to building a future capable organization, it's not a prescription, it's a thinking path. Building an adaptive organization requires a practical and flexible process that allows for exploring, learning, and testing. You can start from where you are. You can lead from where you are. The organization is a complex system and navigating this path to the future, it's more productive and effective when you bring in the ideas, energy, and intelligence from people in all parts and layers of your organization. I work with business leaders and their teams to create collaborative strategic thinking processes to help build for the future. There are robust tools and frameworks all along the way. 
If you'd like to talk about how to start now, wherever you are, to build towards the future, you can reach me through LinkedIn, my website, or through email.